In this video, we're going to talk about simple interest. So simple interest is pretty much what it sounds like. You're not really concerned about compounding and earning interest on your interest in this, in this scenario. Uh, if you don't know about compound interest, you'll probably learn about it after simple interest. But most things in the real world are not simple interest, although you'll use the simple interest formula when you start learning about compounding. So it is very important. So the simple interest formula says that interest equals principal times rate times time. All right, what do all these things mean? Well, first of all, you need to realize you could be borrowing this money or you could be investing this money. So interest, if you're investing money, that's the money that you earn. And the principal would be the money that you invested. If you're borrowing money, then principal is the amount you borrowed and interest is the amount you have to pay. So it works in both directions. Rate is the percent that's earned, I guess I could have said, or paid here. It's earned if you're, if you're uh, investing the money, and it's the percent that you have to pay if you're borrowing the money. Now, usually the percent is an annual percentage rate, and the time here is based on whatever the rate is based on. So if the rate is an annual percentage rate, then the time is measured in years because it's an annual percentage rate. You will see sometimes borrowing money from like those paycheck loan places, you need to look. If their rate is a daily percentage rate, then the time that you're going to plug in here is the number of days. If their rate is a monthly percentage rate, then the time you're going to plug into your formula is the number of months. And you really need to be careful about that because that would affect the amount of interest that you have to pay on those kind of loans significantly. All right, so let's look at an example here. Uh, so my first example says, find the amount of simple interest earned in two months on $3,400, which is earning 4.5% APR, that's your annual percentage rate, and then we're going to find the total amount that is in the account after that amount of time. All right, so it's pretty straightforward. You just identify what variables each variable is, and then you plug in the values. So my little shortcut way of writing my formula, interest equals principal times rate times time. Here we're trying to find the total amount of interest earned. So principal is how much that we invested in, in the account. That's $3,400. The rate is 4.5% annual percentage rate. So we move the decimal two places and we have 0 0.045. Now this is a little bit of the, if there is a tricky part, it's this time part. This is measured in years. But I only want to know two months. That's not even one year, right? That's two months out of 12, or one-sixth of a year. So that's what I need to multiply by, two twelfths. Now, I would suggest punching this all into your calculator at once. Don't estimate these things, because then you might have round-off error. So when you punch this in, let's see if I can pull this up here and clear this. We're just going to punch in 3,400 times 0 0.045. And then to do times 2 twelfths, you could reduce that to 1 sixth if you wanted to. You could times 2 and then divide by 12. That will give you times 2 twelfths. So $25.50. And that's the amount of interest that we earned. So now to answer the other question, find the total amount in the account. We call that sometimes the future value of the account. So the future value of the account after um, these two months have passed, the future value of account. Well, I had $3,400 in there, right? And then I earned this interest of $25.50. So we add those together, and I'd have $3,425.50. Now, in a minute here, we're going to do an example where um, we have to find the principal given the future amount. So it might be good to hang on and watch that. Um, so we're going to need a formula for that. And we see here that our future value is our principal plus the interest that we earned. Okay, So this is the amount in the account after two months, $3,425.50. So let's say now we want to find the future amount. We just learned that that was the principal, the amount that I invested, plus the interest that I earned. And remember, interest is principal times rate times time. 
So our formula for future value is principal plus principal times rate times time, which is your interest. Now what I'm trying to do here is help you guys not have to remember so many formulas. It's, it's pretty logical, right? And if you, you have to memorize principal times rate times time, that's your interest. All right, you're going to add that back in with your principal. You know, just use your common sense. Don't try to memorize this formula without understanding what these things mean. All right, so next example. An account earns simple interest of 4.2% APR. How much should be invested now so that the value of the account in 120 days is $5,000? How much should be invested now? So that's the principle. That's what we're trying to find. And the $5,000 is the future value, the value of the account in 120 days. All right, so we know the future value of the account is going to be the amount that we invest now plus the interest that we earn, which will calculate principal times rate times time. All right, so the future value we want is $5,000. We don't know how much to invest right now. And then whatever we invest right now is going to get multiplied by the rate. Move the decimal two places. And the time is 120 days out of 365 days. Because remember, time here is in years. So we need to take the 120 days divided by 365. Now usually it's 365. There will be times where the problems will say assume 360 days in a year. I don't know exactly why they do that, but that's what they do. All right, now, this little algebra problem here, we've got, we're trying to solve for P, and we've got two different terms with P in them. So what we have to do here to solve for this is factor out the P. We're going to factor this P out. So that'll give me 1, because P divided by P is 1, plus, then this P will be gone, and we'll have 0 0.04 2 times, I'll use a dot for times here, 120 over 365. Now, you might see this as a formula for future value as well. Right? We could take our future value formula up here, and we could say the future value equals, and just factor that P out. And then what are we left with? 1 plus RT. So you could use that formula for future value with the P factored out. And if you just use that formula, then you don't have to factor out the P down here. But it really doesn't matter. OK, so now to find P, we need to divide by what's all in this parentheses right here. So you'll see a lot of books. There's just so many formulas in them because they'll give you a whole different formula for present value. And all they're doing is just doing the algebra. And students they ha think they have to memorize all these other formulas. But if you take this formula and you divide by 1 plus RT on both sides, which is exactly what we're going to do down here. We're just going to divide by all this stuff in parentheses. We would get this formula that says future value divided by 1 plus RT equals present value. Great. Yep, that's the formula. Well, it's just the same formula we had before, just solved for P. So you don't have to memorize a whole new formula. I mean, if your instructor is going to give you all the formulas, great. But if they're not, then don't try to memorize all the formulas. Just memorize one formula and realize you're just solving for a different variable. All right, so to find this present value, we're going to divide 5,000 by all this stuff in this parentheses. Now, again, I'm not going to punch this into my calculator and get a big decimal and round it because I don't want any rounding error. I'm just going to do this all at once. And it really does depend on the type of calculator you have, how difficult this might be. But most people have pretty nice graphing calculators. You could even get this number here and store it somewhere. Some of you guys know how to do that kind of fancy stuff. Let's see if we can uh, accomplish that here. Now, you really should try this on your calculator because all calculators are different. Make sure you can get the answer. All right, so we're going to do 5,000 divided by. Now, we do need to use parentheses here because we have to divide by this entire value, this entire quantity down here divided by the quantity, 1 plus 0 0.042. I don't need to use parentheses again because my calculator knows the order of operations here, times 
120 divided by 365. Now when I close these parentheses, this calculator is going to give me the value of what was inside the parentheses. Then I have to hit equals to get the actual 5,000 divided by that. This number looks reasonable. $4,931.90. I know it's going to be less than 5,000, right? Because my money is going to grow to be $5,000. Let's see if I can remember this number. Uh, 493190. All right, so 4931, $4,931.90 is what I would have to invest right now at this interest rate in order for it to grow to $5,000 in 120 days. So what was the amount of interest earned in that amount of time? Well, we could do the principal times rate times time thing. We could do uh, principal, which would be this amount that we invested, times the rate, 4.2%, times the time. Or we could do 5,000 minus this number, $4,931.90, all right, which would be $68.10. And we could check it out. Let's see. If I take, it should come out to be the same number if I do 4931.9 times 0 0.042 times 120 over 365 principal times rate times time, $68.10, right? So that's kind of a way to check your work. That should be the difference between the future value and the present value. All right, very good. So our last example we want to look at is where we're finding the rate. We are finding the interest rate. So the value of an account earning simple interest grew from $12,000 to $15,324 in 10 months. What is the annual percentage rate? So here we're going to be solving for R. We're going to plug in all the other values that we know. So the future value is $15,324. Uh, the present value, that would be like the amount, or the principal, the amount that you initially invested is $1,200. Now, to calculate the interest, we would do the $1,200 times the rate times the time and the time here is 10 months, so that's 10 out of 12 months, or 10 twelfths of a year. So now it's just an algebra problem. We're going to subtract 1,200 from both sides. Oh, did I? 12,000. Sorry, lost a zero. I was like, $1,200 growing to 15,000. That's a problem. 12,000. That makes more sense. There we go. Minus $12,000. So that's going to give me, what's that going to give you? Think about it like in terms of the problem. Not, so the number is $3,324. What does that represent? Got it? Hopefully you got it. That's the interest, right? Because you're taking the future value minus what you uh, invested. So you earned an interest of $3,324. And how is that interest calculated? Right here, right? Principal times rate times time. Now these numbers are kind of nice, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce um, 12,000 divided by 12. You can cancel or reduce 12,000 divided by 12. Let's do that in green. So 12, 12,000 divided by 12 would just be 1,000, right? So now 1,000 times 10, that is 10,000 times R. Now you don't have to do that. You can just it out with those numbers, but divided by 10,000 on both sides. So now we're looking for an interest rate. So it's going to, should be a number, you know, 0, 0.0 something something so we can move the decimal two places and get our interest rate. So some of you might be looking at this thinking that looks like it's wrong, but it's not because, and actually divide by 10,000, we could just move the decimal four places, but let's go ahead and punch this in. It's not because um, you're looking for an interest rate. Now, this is a very high interest rate, but this money grew a lot in only 10 months. So you would have to get, move the decimal two places here, 33.24%. All 
right? So, like I said, dividing by 10,000, you just move the decimal four places, which we saw on the calculator. Let's do this in black. So to write this as a rate, as a percentage, you'd move the decimal two places to write it as a percent, and that would be the annual percentage rate. You'd have to be getting 33.2% APR in order for your money to grow $3,324 in only 10 months, starting with 12000 All right, so hopefully you see here, what's the formula that you need to memorize? There's only one formula you need to memorize. Interest equals principal times rate times time. And then you have the common sense of knowing, hey, if I want to find my future value, I'm going to have to take my interest and add it in with however much money I started with, my principal. And all the other formulas just kind of fall from that for simple interest. All right, I hope that helped, and have a great day.